Hi everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today is my pregnancy q and I have a whole list of questions that you all sent in over here. Thank you so much for sending in questions. I'm excited to talk to you about everything. I'm also feeling a little winded and tired, so sorry if I, you know, get a little short of breath. That happens sometimes for no reason and I'm feeling it a little bit right now. But I also don't have my glasses on, so I have to kind of peer over. The first question that I got is, oh, I should say also where I, right now I'm at 21 weeks. So I filmed a bunch of videos today. You'll see a lot of different things where I say I'm at 21 weeks. That's all kind of from today. Um, I will also post a picture on Instagram of me in this outfit, which is by far the tightest one that I wore for everything, as you can see the bump the best. Um, okay, so first question. Do you have any morning sickness? I had GERD, which is terrible, throughout the whole pregnancy. I wonder, do you have any certain bags that you prefer to carry during your pregnancy and you expect to carry after the baby is born? Okay, so that's two different questions, and I, actually I got both of those questions multiple times. So, uh, morning sickness. <laughs> Let's just say second trimester is so much better. First trimester was miserable. Um, morning sickness is, that's kind of a weird term. I did not vomit <laughs> throughout my first trimester. I got very close a number of times. I also have a little bit of a fear of vomiting. So uh, I'm actually very, very happy that I didn't though that nauseous feeling was constant throughout and fluctuated to being really terrible, but I did not go a single more than maybe hour or two where I didn't feel terrible for the first, I almost got to 14, I think I was almost through the end of 14 weeks before I started to feel better. So, and it started right around six weeks and it really hit me like a ton of bricks and I'd already had a lot of other pregnancy symptoms before that. So morning sickness depends on how you define that, I guess but I felt really terrible throughout. And then I also had a lot of um, just other symptoms, just being tired, being short of breath, which I have to say the short of, shortness of breath was the most scary because it would come on really suddenly and it was right in the beginning of everything with stay at home and coronavirus. So it was that was a little scary, but shortness of breath, tiredness, being tired all the time, a ton of food aversions. I didn't really get cravings until really just a couple of weeks ago. The first trimester was all just aversions. I couldn't be in the kitchen. I couldn't be near any smells. I couldn't even think about some foods without just feeling an overwhelming, I already had so much nausea, like an overwhelming sense of just awfulness. So yeah, morning sickness was terrible. And that, that time is also, first trimester I think is also just so, anxiety producing that it's just it's just not a good mix all the way around and then of course we hadn't told anybody yet so I couldn't like tell everybody why I was feeling so awful so yes that part that's the first part of that question second part uh, do you have any certain bags that you prefer to carry during your pregnancy and then you expect to carry after boobies born um, I haven't really used bags <laughs> during my pregnancy so some other people asked about baby bags I have ideas for baby bags, which I will be sharing with you all. I had planned to use one that I already have, but I've now found another one that I think might be even better. So I am going to share that with you all. And then uh, in terms of now, I haven't, honestly, I haven't left the house enough to need bags. Most of the time, if I'm out, it's for a walk and I just have some things in my pocket or I go out with my husband and kind of hand him everything. I have just a little crossbody bag from Kuyana that's really just kind of floppy and easy and really lightweight. And if I'm walking, uh, you know, by myself or something like that, I will put that on and kind of put it to the side or behind me, but I can lay it on the top of my belly. So that's really all that I've been carrying. I can't quite imagine carrying like a heavy work bag in the crook of my arm or something right now. Like that would not, that would not be fun. And then, okay, so the next question is also about the baby bag and a um, baby bag that you could use and then recycle or reuse after if it's not needed. So the bag that I'm looking at getting is really versatile and so I hope that I can use it as a baby bag and then when I do go back to work that I might be able to use it as a work bag as well. The other bags that I was considering for baby bags are long shunt bags. I use those for travel. I don't tend to use them for much else anymore. But so it would be a dual purpose bag. I'd be happy to buy a diaper bag and then sell it on. 
but if possible, I would prefer to buy something that I can use afterwards. Okay, next question. How excited are you to have your first? Elated. <laughs> We're really excited. We have been really excited and hopeful and cautiously optimistic the whole time, but we're thrilled. We, we, we were trying, we really wanted to have a baby. So um, yeah, we, we couldn't be happier. We were concerned about if that was gonna be a possibility for us. So it just makes everything so much more excited. Again, we're really cautiously optimistic. There's still a lot of time left, uh, but yeah, we're, we're over the moon. What was your family's immediate reaction? So my family's immediate reaction, we told our parents, my parents and my in-laws on Mother's Day. So we had a good friend of mine, Lexi, if you're watching, thanks. Lexi is a graphic designer and she made, I kind of custom had these ideas for cards and she made these cards for me so that they said something like, you know, the only thing better than having you as a mother on the front, and then you opened it and it says like, is our baby having you as a grandmother? You know, and so we were able to announce on Mother's Day and we did it over Zoom. <laughs> so we had them digital and then we were able to email it to them while we were on the phone with them and watch their reactions to opening it up. And everybody was really, really excited, which is great. My, I said also my sister, we did that way as well. My sister and my mom, both said, I knew it, you know, and we, we were hopeful. We thought that that's what was happening because we were being so cautious about really like leaving the house for anything. And we were just kind of nervous about everything. So everybody was hopeful that that's what it was. And, um, and it was, so that was great. Same thing with friends. Friends were, friends were really excited. Okay. Next, um, nursery ideas. Okay. Well, <laughs> The nursery is actually a long story. We knew which room we wanted to be the nursery, but we're doing quite a bit of renovation, which was all supposed to start before March and if, before everything shut down. And at that point, we had just found out we were pregnant. We weren't comfortable having anybody in the house. And then also like the permit office closed. We have to get a permit for this work. So the permit office opened a couple weeks ago. We're hopeful that we can, we still have to get a couple things together. Um, we're waiting on some stuff from our contractor and then hopefully that will get started. So all that being said, I can't design the nursery until the renovation either happens or doesn't. If we decide that the permit takes way too long to come in and it's just too close for comfort, then we have a backup plan for what we're gonna do, um, but we really would like to get it done. But I'm not buying anything for the nursery until it's done because otherwise we're gonna have like dust everywhere. I actually have to move out during the process because we've got lead in our walls and that's dangerous for me and the baby. So I, I can't buy anything for the nursery yet, but we do have ideas. It's just not gonna come together for a while. So I will share that with you all uh, when I have a much better idea of what that looks like, but it is, um, and an anxiety producing <laughs> sort of timeline of things. The next is what are you most excited about as a new mom? Everything. I'm excited to bring a child into the world with my husband, who's my favorite person in the world, just to be able to do that. I'm so excited to watch a baby grow. I'm excited to expand our family. I'm excited to teach the baby to, you know, be a happy and <laughs> and kind and all sorts of things. So I, I'm really thrilled about all of it. I don't think I can pick a most excited thing. We're just, we're really excited for the journey and the process. And some of the journey will be terrible. <laughs> we're totally aware of that. I mean, I don't think we can ever be as aware as, I don't think you can ever be fully aware until you experience it. but. I can't pick, I can't pick one thing. <laughs> How are you feeling? Any morning sickness? I addressed the morning sickness. Second trimester, I have been feeling better. I've still felt a lot of things. I've certainly still had symptoms most times. The last week or two have actually been a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I, just, I definitely feel pregnant. <laughs> so lots of symptoms, um, but yeah, not morning sickness anymore, thank goodness. What is my due date? My due date right now is November 12th. We do have our big anatomy scan next week and then that should give us 
and potentially updated due date. I can't imagine it will change too much, but it may change a little bit. Of course, that doesn't mean anything, right? Um, I was early, my sister was really late, my uh, husband was pretty close to being on time. We think my nephews, one was two weeks early and one was a month early. So who knows, who knows? We are, you know, sort of expecting any time from kind of, I guess, the middle of October to the middle of November, potentially late November, I guess, right? Like there's like a, a month and a half that it could be around that, maybe even two months, right? I, who knows? The next question is, how is Mr. Chic Professor taking it? He is excited and the person who asked this knows him. So um, yeah, he's, he's thrilled. I think it's different. For them they don't feel it they don't feel their body going through it as much um he's gonna be the best dad in the world he's been actually much he's been ready to be a dad for years i was the one who kind of wanted to wait a little bit longer so um yeah he's really really excited and definitely gets anxious about things right as we all do the nursery is certainly an anxiety producing thing especially because he does a lot of the work around the house we're, we're both handy but i can't do a lot right now so and he's like way way more handy than i am we both like to do projects i should say but he's way more handy than i am um so you know he's got stuff to do stuff to get done deadlines for work and school and everything um and then and then that so i think the there's there's a time crunch pressure, but in terms of like being ready to be a dad, he's totally ready and really, really excited. So the next question is, are you thinking about names? And uh, yes, we've been thinking about names for quite a while. We actually have had a name picked out for years um, together. <laughs> and then I had that name, the first name, we came up with the middle, we came up with the whole thing kind of together. but first name I have had picked out for probably 20 years. <laughs> so um, that was, of course, if the baby was one sex versus the other. According to our blood work, that is true. I am going to wait until after the anatomy scan to confirm that with you all. Um, just, just, I want to hear, <laughs> I want to hear the confirmation that that is true. Um, but in our head, that's totally been true. And I've been saying that the whole time um, that I thought that the baby's First of all, sex and gender are two different things. We don't need to have a whole lecture right now, but right, I thought that the baby's sex um, just felt like the baby's sex was one versus another. So um, the other, we had a lot more trouble with with names and actually never really came up with one that we liked. We realized we just didn't like so many. We had a couple that we were okay with, but never felt um, as real as this name, which if all goes well, will be the name. So. That's with names. Next question, what is the most important lesson you look forward to teaching the baby? That's a really good question. As someone who loves education, right, I'm so excited to just watch a baby experience the world and learn about all of these new things. And I mean, I watched my nephews grow up, but it's, it's not the same. Uh, in terms of like what I want to teach, I want to encourage happiness and not doing something because and, and like being true to yourself finding the thing that makes you special whatever that is um or if that's nothing right but being happy and being kind are probably the two biggest things for me being aware of the world and making the world a better place for other people in the world <laughs> i think those are that's kind of my my big lessons that I want to get across but everybody wants their child to be happy and successful I think if my child can make a difference in other people's lives for the better then that's like the biggest thing you could ever like hope for and the last question have you felt the baby move a lot so two three weeks ago four weeks ago three weeks ago I would say at this point I started to feel flutters very recently, those have gotten a little bit more intense. They also went down for a little while, which was scary. Um, I'm pretty sure, you know, that just happens. But uh, the I'm now starting to feel what I think are the beginning of kicks more than just flutters. But 
I just, I can't identify it yet. Like I just don't know enough about what it's supposed to feel like to know. But yeah, right now it's movement many times a day and um, really feeling very connected too because you feel those movements. It feels very real and exciting. So yes, I am feeling some movement. So I somehow missed two questions completely. Sorry about that. Um, so I'm coming to you a little bit later, a couple weeks later, actually. I just finished my anatomy scan and I believe I had talked about that a little bit in there, but I can go ahead and confirm that biological sex is a girl and we are very, very excited about that. That's what I wanted. Um, so I'm very happy with that. And then the other two questions, which I think were really good questions and I just totally missed them, one was, what is the maternity leave policy like in the U.S.? Is it up to individual employers? And then they said in Australia, it's very reasonable. Um, it is up to individual employers, I believe. I, I know that there are different state rules for different states. I'm not sure exactly how it works. I have all my insurance and everything is under my husband's job. So I know his job more than mine because as an adjunct uh, instructor, I don't qualify for any benefits. So I don't have any benefits that way. For me, there's nothing, um, but he gets family time off, which is really nice. Um, so it works out well for him and then it works out fine for us because I am going to be <laughs> giving birth um, kind of between semesters. So I've got, I've got some time to take off, but I don't get actual maternity leave at my job. I'm so sorry for the shaky camera, y'all. I'm out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting on the ground and so I, I it's a little shaky sorry um, the other question was about if my Instagram was going to change which is a very very valid question um, the answer is yes maybe kind of yeah <laughs> my life is going to change in such a big way and I showcase my life to an extent on Instagram um, I cannot show my regular wardrobe on me right now. I can't style it that way. And I'm not going into work in the office um, for a while. So in that way, it will change. Will I become a full-time mommy blogger? Absolutely not. I have no interest in doing that, um, but it will be a big part of my life. So I will share things probably more in stories. Um, and I will still share outfits and I do still have a propensity and love of workwear. So I do gravitate towards those kinds of pieces and will be showcasing those. Will I be doing it as often as I'm not going into the office and getting dressed every day? No, probably not. So my Instagram will transition and change to an extent, but I hope that the core of it remains the same. Certainly sustainability will be key. Workwear will still be a big part of me and my love of luxury I don't think is going anywhere. So that is it for this Q&A. If you have any other questions, let me know. If there's anything you want like a dedicated video on also, let me know. I didn't really talk about my pregnancy journey. You all didn't ask about it, which is totally fine. Um, but if anybody wants to, I'm happy to be very open to that. Uh, it's certainly not always easy and certainly wasn't um, fully easy, though there, we got, I think we got very lucky in some ways and very unlucky in others. So um, yeah, but that's it. <laughs> we. Are, I will do some more updates throughout. I will plan on also showing you all some maternity hauls and I'm definitely gonna cover the bags, the baby bags. I know that that's been a big one. Or nappy bags or diaper bags, whatever you call it, right? I know that's been a big a big question. Um, so I will definitely cover that and other things that feel sort of relevant with everything. But yeah, that's it. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video.